So every time I that can't wait to try that every time I play audio and talk, I have to take a shot. <laughs> so um, this could be fun. You're in for a ride. I don't know if I kick drum to something. I don't know what. Start. I'm going to start with the kick. Right, I'm the first person in the history to ever start with a kick drum. Yeah, that's un unconventional. Never heard of that before. So what I like to do, which may not be, is I like to loop sections of a song. And so let's just go with the fucking beginning, right? So we're going we're gonna to grab our little loop point here. We're going to make sure that we actually are in loop right over here. And let's just go. So I'm going to pull it up here slowly. I did some printing on the way in, so I EQ'd on the way in, but what I like to do is get rid of the basketball sound. And if you, if you guys know, the basketball sound is around 200 to 300 hertz, and I hate that in a kick drum. Ugh, that is so fucking ugly and disgusting. Get that out of your kick drum. Really tight really punchy, really sexy, so I added a little bit of top end here, a little bit of low end, and I scooped the low, low mids here with a pretty wide cue. Slowly add in the kick out. The kick out is so important. It's to get round and sexy and deep and punchy, and like that's the shit that people love. Solo this. It sounds terrible by itself. Oh, I have to take one shot. That was pretty good so far, though. It's not really a shot, it's more of a sip. Think of it like King's Cup. Now I'm going to take the two kick samples that I used. I'm going to make a group. Kick samp mix. kind of fade around it a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to kind of check this one out. So this this one is a little bit more spanky and slappy. In the mix, this one becomes more crucial. By itself, it's not as crucial. So I'm going to weigh a little bit heavier on the on the actual real kick for now. What did you use for the kick out? So I used the Yamaha Subkick. That's what I always use. Uh, luckily, they were sponsored by Yamaha, so they had one. Um, which, if you guys don't know, it's an NS10 speaker inverted. And so what it does is it captures the low end. It's in this little drum. I don't entirely know the science behind it. I apologize in advance. I'm not the most technical mixer engineer. I know how to use it, though. But I know how to fucking use it, that's for sure. So... I like where that's sitting, so I'm going to start to bring in the snare, kind of everything mono I'm going to start to bring in, and then we'll kind of bring in the room, we'll kind of bring in the left and the right soon after that. So I'm going to bring in the snare. Yep. What is already on the snare? Okay, so what I have right now is just a gate. I'll mute the reverb. So you can kind of hear the rim shots, right? You can hear the boom, which in the track, it kind of has its place. So what I'm going to do is bring in a little bit of thud into it. So by thud, I'm going to bring in a little bit of the 200 hertz range, bring in a little bit of that. Makes it real crisp, but also, so you have the crack, but you also have this low end. Is that because 
like you said earlier, the tendency with rim shots is for them to become very tiny. Yep, so exactly. you're compensating for that by adding that, uh, what it looks like 112 through yep. boost of 112 and at 196. Exactly. And I already, I EQ'd the snare going in. And so I kind of did a similar version of this. But this is just kind of adding on top. You can, you know, you got to do it till it's right. It doesn't matter if you already moved it the same place. It really doesn't matter. Can you talk for a second about the gate that you've got sure. on there? So I use this this Mic DSP channel G, and it's it's on an expand mode, so that it doesn't sound unnatural. I'll bypass it so you can hear. That's with it bypassed, and here's with it on. Not doing a ton, but it's doing just enough to where you're seeing it expand. And if I mess with the threshold here, you can see the difference. Have it in the media, in like the middle for release time, and the hold kind of kind of around this range. I feel like it it sits nicely here, where where it's not chopping in and out. I hate when it gets too choppy and you miss like the full release of it. I don't want to make the snare any thinner than it already is, you know? And then with this guy, I'll probably add, I think on this one, I added a little bit of compression as well. And I used the 6030 here from McDSP. It's kissing it. I'm not adding a ton to it. And then I'll, I'll add the drum room to it, which is about, I like to have a medium room. The level of the drum reverb that I have is going to change. I use a, a snare verb send. I, I usually have my sends at unity gain and, and go accordingly. And then I'll... Medium room. Mm -hmm. Can you go into that a little bit? Sure. I'll play around with the time on this. I use this large natural studio. Make it too big, you, it kind of starts to sound like an 80s uh, hair band. Like that, so I have it right around. And that's where you start to see it get wide. And I'm gonna blend this to taste once the rest of the drums are in. So moving on, I'll, I'll start to add more elements to it. Bottom, add some snap. I really, I really kind of want to eventually just not even record the snare bottom because like we don't use it, but it's kind of nice to have. It's kind of one of those recording normals that you should just do it. And like, I don't really love the sound of a snare bottom, but it does have its place. Start to bring in the sample as well. Kick and snare now. So what I'll do after this, let's go to the rooms. Let's start to widen this bad boy up. So let's just listen to, this, to the rooms by themselves. And like I said, this room isn't the normal room that I tracked my stuff in. This is kind of a wild, dry space. So I printed a distressor. I had distressors on it. I did some filtering already. I did everything I could before going into this mode. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, I'm gonna I'm gonna filter it some more, and I'm gonna make it real woofy. I'm gonna just try to make it as big as possible. That involves filtering here. What I'm looking to do is bring in what I, what I kind of want out of a reverb. I want to bring in the, the gutter. I want to bring in the 200 hertz. I want to bring in, 
I, wa I don't want the highs. I have plenty of mics to, to capture the high stuff. So I want to get the low stuff. I want to get, I want to get the, the, the hair. I want to get the hair on the kit. So that's essentially what I'm going for. I, and I want it to pump. Bring in a little bit of this. I'm going to add some lows even. Be afraid to compress it too much because you're really you're kind of using this as an effect. You want to blend this. You want to capture that that room. I mean, the room is important in terms of the depth of your mix. So I really love the rooms and depending on where everything is, because the, the higher your rooms are, the more like woofy it's going to get. So you want to find that balance. So I'll even go in, I think on this song, I wasn't totally stoked from there and I did some more filtering. To hear the pump, you can start to hear it's starting. To, it's starting to push with the song, and you want it to be musical. So then, at the end, this adds. This is really subtle. I have this at thirteen percent, and this is a large dark room. And I take the highs here, and I just and I try to to put it about right here. And you can barely hear it, but it just adds some width. Bypass it. Put it back in. I probably end up putting this around the, the minus 20 range somewhere, somewhere around there, depending on where everything else ends up. And then from here, I'll just start kind of lifting up. I'll probably just start lifting up some faders to kind of just get the kit to sound full. And then we'll kind of play around from there. This album, I also did a room mono. I, I can't remember what mic we used. I'll have to look it up. It was a condenser and it was just a squish mic. And so you can get some cool shit from here. Start to blend everything. <laughs> 